Okay, what I'd like to show you today is a quick tutorial on how you can use Easy Builder to control Windows Media Player. You're going to need to utilize some batch files and some PowerShell scripts. If you're not familiar with those things, then this will be a um, <clears throat> gentle introduction to those. Uh, this came about from a discussion on the Easy Robot community forum uh, with a question about controlling Windows Media Player <clears throat> and how you could do it. We learned that you can that you can launch Media Player, you can play a file fairly easily, and you can launch a playlist. But beyond that, Windows Media Player does not uh, allow for a lot of granular command line control which is what you would need in order to send a scripted command to uh, the Windows Media Player <clears throat> and we learned this uh, um, because Microsoft has published information about this stating what what command lines are available and as you can see, they only provide a few. It doesn't provide the granular control to do things like increase volume, go to the next track, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, what I discovered is a way that we can use PowerShell, which is included by default with Windows. It should be included with Windows 7 and Windows 8. <clears throat> if for some reason your system didn't have PowerShell, you can download it from Microsoft. It's a widely used uh, product in the IT field for managing Windows servers. It's a scripted language based on .NET. Anything that you can do within the .NET framework, you can do, uh, for the most part, under PowerShell. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, you're going to need to download all the related files. And you do that from j2rscientific.com. Go to the software section. <clears throat> and download the latest version of the Windows Media uh, Player Controls. I'm going to save this to my desktop. And from there you're going to want to unzip these files. Uh, I have mine stored under My Documents and Easy Builder and My Project Files. <clears throat> As you can see, I have different folders for my batch files, uh, my PowerShell files, and a shortcut file, which links to my 80s playlist. I'll explain that in a moment. And I also have the uh, media player controls for EasyB. We'll start from, uh, start from the beginning and open Easy Builder. <clears throat> you want to open the Media Player Controls project file. I'll expand this out so you can see the control names and you'll notice there's a lot of different scripts in here. This is all geared towards uh, controlling media and sound. There's different options. Not all of them are related to the Windows Media Player. <clears throat> um, Starting at the beginning, the Win Media Player script, if we take a look at it, it launch, launches a batch file. Uh, this is one example of how you can launch the Windows Media Player. And if we want to stop it, we can close the Media Player via batch file as well. <clears throat> Now, if we take a look at, um, at our batch files, the uh, 80s playlist batch file, we right click it and go to edit, <clears throat> we can see that the batch file, uh, we're telling it to launch the Windows Media Player EXE and we're passing it the playlist that we want to play. The reason why we're doing this in a, in a batch file rather than utilizing uh, EasyScript directly for this is because EasyScript 
doesn't appear to like um, opening this exe from this location it ha seems to have a problem with the, the spaces in the program files um, directory and it, it additionally doesn't appear to understand what to do with a playlist so utilizing a batch file that's one way to get around it um, so we have some examples of batch files we have um, some examples of um, how to stop easy builder sounds um, the and text to speak uh, text to speech volume up volume down these are just different different ones I've included they're not related to the Windows Media Player what is related to the Windows Media Player are starting with the easy win media player these are going to be the uh, recommended way to control your media player if we take a look uh, now what we're doing is we're using the execute command and let's take a look at the script help for it and I'll show you why we're, we're utilizing a a shortcut to launch a, a playlist um, <clears throat> the um, execute function uh, as you can see in the examples you can launch notepad and you can also pass a parameter you can launch notepad and tell it what text file you want to open um, that doesn't work correctly for the Windows Media Player it doesn't uh, appear to like the directory that it's in and it doesn't seem to understand what to do with uh, a playlist when it, when that parameter is, is is called up so the easiest way to get around that is to create a shortcut an LNK file of your playlist which uh, easy script uh, does understand how to open um, so that covers launching it. Now let's stop and close the media player. If we take a look at that, the code in here is uh, might look a little confusing, uh, but what we've learned is that we can send a variable with the attributes that we need in order to utilize the task kill, which is a built-in um, executable command of Windows task kill and uh, we want to stop the media player from running um, no, nothing very fancy here this is just a way to stop the program from running when you um, if you had media player open and you clicked on the close command uh, if you were to see you know like what commands are being sent to Windows this is essentially what gets sent a task kill and what it's killing so you're just we're, we're just coding in the process to do that mute uh, from um, starting at mute and unmute volume up volume down all of these are going to now utilize a batch file and all of these batch files are going to point back to a PowerShell script. Uh, we can't uh, call PowerShell up directly under Easy Builder, or at least if we can, I have not dis discovered a way to do it. L uh, just like uh, um, the execute command doesn't doesn't like uh, utilizing uh, like a playlist directly, it doesn't seem to uh, like a PowerShell script calling that up directly so that's why we're using a batch file in order to call up a PowerShell script um, so with this let me uh, show you how the functions work or show you that they do work at least we'll go to mute now you can still hear this I'm gonna go to stop and this actually stops it. The reason why you can still hear it, 
or why you could still hear it, is because it was playing and what got muted were the system speakers. But because I'm going through recording software, the computer itself, because it's still playing, uh, it was still recording. So I've utilized stop, but uh, as you can see on my speakers, it is muted. Um, I'm going to go back and um, now that we've stopped it, I'm going to hit play. And now it's playing. I can't hear it, but you still can. I'm going to hit the button for mute, unmute again, so that way I can hear it. We're going to go to volume down, and you can see it goes down two steps. Volume up, up two steps. finally stop and now if we want to close it uh, we want to use the easy stop when media player and that closes it okay so hopefully that all made sense the code is going to be all the same all that we're doing is executing a batch file the only thing that really changes is the name of the batch file so with that out of the way now we need to look at our batch files and all of these are going to be formatted the same way. Didn't mean to run it. Go to edit. Um, <clears throat> and our batch file is saying run PowerShell. We're passing it the execution pol policy of remote signed to allow it to run. We're saying run this file. And this is the file name, our script. Mute, unmute, PowerShell. Or PS1 file. All of the batch files are going to be formatted the same way. The only thing that changes is the name of the PowerShell script. If we take a look at next track, same thing. So if you create new PowerShell scripts in the future, you can utilize the same method of controlling it and just change the name of your PowerShell script. So before we open up PowerShell, if you have never used PowerShell before, never seen it before, never heard of it, um, I want to show you that there's you're going to probably have two versions of PowerShell, or two different um, executables for PowerShell. If you just type in PowerShell, the first thing will, that will pop up is Windows PowerShell. If we click on that, what we get is a command line interface, kind of like typing in CMD, uh, where you could uh, ping a computer or something like that. Uh, this is a command line interface. You could type in the directory of a PowerShell script and tell it to run it that way. Um, this is not the best interface for creating PowerShell scripts, and I, I don't utilize it. What I use is the PowerShell ISE. And this is what gives you a graphical interface. It gives you space to create your scripts. It gives you an output field. Uh, it lists some of the various commands. You can do a search for different commands that you might want to use. I'm going to go to File and Open. And we'll take a look at the Mute Unmute. That was some junk I previously put in there for testing something. <clears throat> so. Uh, with this code, you might see that this looks a little bit familiar to EasyScript. If you use a hashtag, that's a way to make a comment. Uh, and a dollar sign indicates a variable. Click Undo. Um, so with this R code, we're setting a variable. And we're going to say it's a new object. It's a com object. And we're calling the wsscript.shell comma object and then we're setting send key 
character 173. So from this code, you might guess send key. That sounds like you're sending a keyboard character, and you would be correct. So the trick is 173. Well, are you typing out 173? Oh, no. 173 is the character command for the mute unmute button on your keyboard. So, so you might say to yourself, well, that's great. How do I know that? Well... There's various websites like this one, uh, orlando.mvps.org slash sendkeysmore.asp. And it lists a variety of key commands. And when we get to the um, 170 range, you'll find that 173 equals the volume mute key. For and it lists it for Windows 2000 and XP, but it's the 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 key command holds true for Windows 7 and Windows 8. Uh, <clears throat> and we also find the volume down, the volume up, next track, previous track, track, stop media, play, pause. Uh, we also find other key commands which we're not using, but these keys related to me, uh, media playing we are. So that's all that we're doing with these PowerShell scripts, is we're sending a keyboard character. If we open up uh, one of the other PowerShell scripts, uh, we can see for the play pause we're sending 179. Um, and that that's all we're doing with, uh, with this. <clears throat> so... Uh, I'm going to manually run this batch file. So that start. And that paused our media player. Um, you can you can test these PowerShell scripts from um, directly from PowerShell by hitting the run script button. Uh, so if we go to play again, um, and there you go. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial.